Hello, this is chapter one, video number five. Um, today we are gonna be talking about something that is very important in statistics, um, and that is the topic of bias, bias in your um, statistics. Uh, now, whether it is intentional or unintentional, this is something that always needs to be taken into consideration as we are looking at conclusions made from data. Uh, so three different types of bias that we're gonna talk about today are sampling bias, uh, non-response bias, and response bias. So let's go ahead and start with sampling bias. Uh, sampling bias occurs whenever there is a disconnect between the sample and the population. Remember, we want our sample to be as representative as possible of our population, but sometimes we miss the mark. Um, so a good example of this would be a landline uh, phone interview uh, during the day. Uh, now let's think about it. If you are doing a survey of only landline phones during the day, you're going to have a sample that is full of old people. Uh, my grandma will answer the phone to anybody during the day. Um, we have, so uh, that sample is not going to be representative of the overall population. Uh, now another example, and I'm going to go ahead and pick on both of them equally, uh, are going to be Fox News and CNN viewer polls. Uh, let's think about this. If you're somebody on Fox News that is conducting a poll, or if you're somebody on CNN that is uh, conducting a poll, uh, you're only sampling from the people that are already viewing your shows, and the people who watch Fox News and CNN are typically kind of like-minded. Uh, so your results of these polls are not gonna be really representative of the population. They're just gonna be representative of your viewers. Um, so it's gonna be very hard to draw conclusions just from polls like this. Uh, so that is sampling bias, when your sample does not uh, match up to your population. All right, now non-response bias. That is when your responders um, are vastly different than your non-responders. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and use Yelp reviews uh, for an example. Looking at Yelp reviews, uh, most of the time if you take the time to fill out a Yelp review on a restaurant, either you've had a really good experience or a really bad experience. Uh, very often do you have a review that just says, eh, yeah, everything was good three stars. Um, very often these are opinionated. So those that are taking the time to respond might have a different opinion than those that do not respond. Uh, same thing, let's say that you are looking at a customer satisfaction uh, faction survey um, on the bottom of a receipt. Same thing. You're probably not going to get a lot of responses. I don't think I've ever filled out one of those Taco Bell surveys. feel bad, but I've never filled one out. Uh, most likely, uh, the people that are taking the time to respond have had a different experience from those that did not respond. Uh, and one final example, I'm going to go ahead and uh, radio uh, talk shows. Um, I love listening to sports radio. However, if you listen to the people that are talking on sports radio, very often they have strong opinions, strong opinions to the point where they called in and wanted to talk about it. Um, so non-response bias is when there is a difference between those that take the time to respond and then finally those that do not. All right, response bias. This is our last type we're going to talk about. And with a response bias, these are for the people that have taken the time to respond. They were sampled, they responded, and here's the issue with this. Sometimes what people report is not quite the truth. I'm gonna go ahead and use the example of medical records. Uh, think about those surveys with medical records. How often do you smoke? How often do you exercise? How often do you eat vegetables? Do you drink milk? How many glasses of water? Uh, sometimes with sensitive information like this, we uh, as humans tend to over exaggerate our level of health. Um, so medical records, very often it's, it's possible that we're not quite telling the truth. Uh, same thing is if there is the impression that the survey uh, is from uh, someone in power. Uh, so let's say that there is a police department that is going around collecting information from citizens uh, and they want to know uh, their opinions on the community. Well, very rarely, um, very rarely are people going to be completely honest uh, when they're being interviewed by somebody in power. Uh, there's a reason why instructors at ICC do not get 
their feedback from students until after the final exam. Students won't be truthful if they think that that information could come back to bite them in the butt. Um, so with a response bias, that means that there is a difference between what is being reported and the actual truth. Uh, so those are our types of bias. We've got sampling, when the sample doesn't match up with the population, non-response, when the responders don't match up with the non-responders, and then finally response bias is when the information that we receive is not quite the truth. And we need to be careful of reporting these and very mindful when we are judging um, data and statistics and how it is reported.